Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we're talking about overclocking the new GTX 980 Ti. This is a Maxwell card on the GM200 GPU. I've already got a review online from yesterday or the day before where we talk about the card, its performance on the whole, but what we're doing here is looking strictly at overclocking. And Maxwell overclocks a bit differently from previous architectures. Primarily, Maxwell introduces something called power percent target, and this is the percentage of watts over the native wattage provided to the card that you're allowing for overclocking. So if in, in the case of GM200 and in the case of the GTX 980 Ti, which is what we're looking at here, the power percent target's max setting is 110%. Other cards will allow 120%, even 125% in the case of some GTX 960s but for the reference card we're stuck at 110 so we can set it to 110 that allows an additional 10 percent of power over the native power provided so the GM200 that's on the 980 Ti has the same memory subsystem the same architecture as every other Gen 2 Maxwell card meaning after the 750 Ti launch and that would include the GTX 980 and the Titan X the Titan X uses the GM200 GPU the 980 uses the GM204 960 is GM206 in terms of overclocking, it's the same idea for all of them, but your results will be different. The 980, for instance, I can push a bit higher than the 980 Ti, but the performance obviously is much greater with the 980 Ti. So we got about a 19% performance gain, as you'll see in charts momentarily, from the overclock. And I was able to push the base clock and boost clock about 14 uh, to about 1444 MHz, which is 40% higher than the native clock rate. The native clock rate of the GTX 980 Ti is 1000 MHz and boost is only 1075 MHz, so nothing too impressive stock, but after overclocking we can easily push pretty close to 1500. Uh, I did lose stability once we started hitting above 1450 though, and we'll talk about that momentarily. So what you're looking at right now is a chart showing our incremental jumps to the clock rate, the voltage, things like that. And we do this in a way that's it's very specific for test methodology purposes. I set the memory offset to only plus 500 megahertz. You could easily set this to much higher, uh, potentially 800 megahertz or more. But we're more focused on the core clock for overclocking in this instance. So I've sort of ignored the memory clock. We set it to something that's decent, but not the maximum available. Voltage was maxed out immediately. And then we just increment the core clock slowly. Voltage pushes about 1.187 volts on the GTX 980 Ti reference card, and it is thermally limited with the reference cooler, so we'll see much better results once we move to aftermarket coolers, liquid coolers, things like that, as the, uh, the board partners come out with their own cards. For our overclocking methodology, we move things slowly for the core clock. It starts out with bigger jumps, like 25 megahertz at a time, and then once we find instability, that would be in the form of visual artifacts like red flickering or texture tearing, or we find a driver crash, which happens frequently when you're overclocking, then it's time to step it back down. So I do two passes of endurance testing. One is a very quick five minute check just to see if there's any artifacting or failure of the drivers. And then if that's fine, I move forward and do the next step in the frequency. And we just keep repeating that until a point at which the first five minute pass shows a failure and then it's time to step it back down. I'll step it down a bit and then do two tests. The first is the five minute pass. The second one is a long endurance test, 20 to 30 minutes using MSI Combustor, which is just Furmark reskinned. It pushes about 100% GPU load to the GPU, even the GTX 980 Ti, and that should provoke a failure. If it doesn't provoke a failure, then we found our stable clock rate. In the case of this, the offset was about 255 megahertz, so it's just below what the Titan X is generally capable of. That tends to push 1452 megahertz or somewhere in that range. This card pushes about 1444 megahertz, so very close. And the GTX 980 Ti and Titan X are only different in their core count. So the uh, Ti has 2816 cores and the TIX has 3072 cores. So that's where your major difference is in performance pre-overclock. After overclocking, as you see in these charts, the Titan X is actually left behind a little bit by the GTX 980 Ti and we see a 19% performance jump over the 980 Ti base. So that's a pretty big gain. It's a massive gain over the 980 non-Ti card, and it's reasonable over the Titan X. So if you're willing to overclock, you can push your GTX 980 Ti beyond the $1,000 Titan X for performance, which is big. That's a big deal. 
Note that overclocking over long terms can cause damage to the semiconductor. Just extra heat is not great for it. So you'll really want to adventure with this outside of the reference cooler, which is what we have here. The card is thermally constricted with the reference cooler. It's pushed completely to its limits. EVGA has got a liquid version coming out. I believe ASUS might have a liquid version coming out. And then there's all kinds of aftermarket options from MSI. Uh, they're doing a liquid cooler as well, partnered with Corsair. So plenty of options for 980 Ti overclocking. It is definitely worth your time to try it out. Do be careful when you're doing the clock right stepping because you can cause damage to the device by overclocking it. So just uh, do it incrementally, be careful, and do five minute and then endurance passes and check for uh, instability. I would also recommend logging the temperatures to make sure the temperature is within the safe threshold. This should not exceed 92 Celsius ever. It is designed to thermally shut down when it hits that temperature, but you wanna be below that anyway, probably in the 80s at a max. So that is the overclocking guide for the 980 Ti. Pretty impressive stuff. Definitely a 19% gain for performance is a big deal and is, is worth trying if you have a 980 Ti. Check out our Patreon page linked at the end of this video in the end slate, as well as the 980 Ti review if you haven't seen that already. And we've got some cool Witcher content, all that stuff on the channel. Do check out the channel for more information. Subscribe as always. And for those who were posting comments on the previous video, I do read most of the comments, so it's, it's great to hear your uh, outreach and, and hear feedback. Some people were saying that they wish they could donate to the Patreon page, but they just can't. That's totally fine. The best thing you can do for us anyway is to share the content, tell people about us, and if you like it, then leave a comment or, or hit like or something like that. I will see you all next time.